Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So I'm doing this pool series where I've been starting my pool up for the uh, for the spring. You know, after it's been shut down the whole winter time, and this is about as far as I've gotten with it. So there's a little bit of still a little cloudy, but it, it's coming back around, as you can tell here. Can you see that? Yep. I got my uh, redneck water fountain going right here. But uh, anyway, finally getting it cleaned up. So. Let me see, this is what I've done to it so far. I've put, I've used two pounds of, uh, no, I'm sorry, like one pound of shock. Um, and that kind of got the whole thing jump started. I've had to put six bags of 40 pound salt in the pool. Pool was about half full, I had to fill it back up. It took about a day to fill it back up with our with our well over here. It's just a little, little well, but anyway, luckily I didn't dry my, my well up. So I've had to do a few things um, with the pool so far to get it to where it is uh, today. I've been working on it for about a week. So after, you know, it went complete green to to this. So it's looking pretty good, it's getting there. But um, I did have to replace my pool pump and uh, I actually ended up going with a, this is a Hydro Tools one and a half horsepower uh, pump. It's really quiet, works great. I'm standing here by it right now. Um, let me see if I can flip my camera around. And no, I can't flip my camera around. Oh well. But anyway, I'm gonna end this video right here and I'll go back to the side. All right, so <clears throat> that's what the pool looks like now. And the Achilles heel for our pool right now um, as far as getting it going this spring is this. Yes, <laughs> this is the Intex uh, saltwater chlorinator. And uh, I have been bit by Intex just like everybody else on YouTube. So basically what happens is with these Intexes, I'm gonna sit down here because I've been working on the thing. It's got a salt cell which are, um, these are titanium plates. Now, I, they say they're titanium. I, I don't really think they're titanium. I think it's a titanium oxide. Basically, they probably just take some aluminum plates because it's cheaper to do it that way and coat them with titanium. Now, of course, you know, the, the purpose behind that is uh, preventing corrosion because obviously it's, it's in the flow, it's in water and you don't want those plates to corrode. Um, at any rate, so the issue with these um, Intex saltwater chlorinators is they only last about two years. And there's a reason why Intex does a two-year warranty because they know these things will fail within two seasons. Um, this is my second one. The first one I had failed exactly after the second season. So basically, I'm the third season into it. Um, this one failed exactly after the second season so I'm in the third season with this so I've been putting up with this for about six years basically but what happens is they stop producing chlorine because for whatever reason the electronics right here and you can see it's a very it's a very simple board there, there's really not much going on on this uh, PCB board so I do have a background in electronics um, this kind of stuff does not scare me at all and uh, Matter of fact, I do have a degree in electrical and electronical, electronics and electrical engineering. But anyway, I've watched all the YouTube videos and I've been trying to wrap my head around the theory behind this, what this simple, you know, PCB board does. And I mean, it, there's really not much to it. You know, you have a power button, you have a boost button and you have a clean button. Okay. So let me kind of go a little further technical into this thing. All right, so you have the titanium cells, okay? We know how we can create chlorine from salt. Basically, there's a chemical reaction that happens when you send electrical current uh, through plates that are in the water. Um, it creates uh, chlorine, okay, basically. And so if you look at here, you can see the thing. Let me get my, let me get, a, let me get the focused in. So you can see how the cloudiness is. Basically, I have such a, a high, flow pump it's hard to see the bubbles but they are in there so you can see them right here so it, it, it's now generating chlorine okay so you can see it's working 
<clears throat> but what I had to do to make these titanium plates work again, I basically had to, for a lot, I mean, look, for lack of better terms, this is what everybody uses on YouTube. And I really don't like the saying hot wire, but you are essentially hot wiring this whole unit. You're bypassing everything that this um, PC board is doing, okay? And you're hooking it right up to, this right here is called a rectifier. Basically what it does is, and basically what it does is it converts AC current into DC current, okay? So AC is a sine wave, right? You know, you have a 120 hertz sine wave, uh, 120 volt sine waves coming in, and it converts it to DC, you know, which it basically just takes a sine wave and cuts it off. Instead of having both directions, you're having just one uh, output for your direct current, okay? You have a positive and a negative. That's how that works. So all this is doing is it's converting 120 volts. Actually, the 120 volts is probably stepped down to about 14 volts before it gets this little doodad right here. It's called a rectifier. This does not step down the voltage. Your transformer under this box right here, which is right there. And it's a huge transformer, I must have. I don't know why they have such a huge transformer for a, a piece of equipment that literally does not even a half amp. I mean, okay, whatever, we get it. So, but, um, so once this converts it to DC with the black and the red, that then goes into this PC board, okay? You can see there's a couple, there's a couple caps on here. There's a few more caps. There's some transistors. There's some relays and whatnot. And basically all this thing is doing, it's, and there's a small chip on this, probably a 555 timer, I'm sure. I really haven't, I've not gone too deep into the thing, but I'm sure it's a 555 timer. And then probably just some more logic. Probably not, there's really not much logic to it. There's only one chip in there, which is probably just a 555 timer because it does have a timer. Um, that you can set and it comes up on the display and I'm sure the chip also that one little bitty chip Well, there's two chips on there actually the other one probably just controls the numbers on the, the, the numerical output on the display That's all this board does. Okay Now with that being said um, This is the theory that has really got me stumped behind the operation of this saltwater coordinator All right I've done a lot of research on it. I've seen all the other YouTube videos. I've seen how people have quote, in quote, hot wired their unit. And some have had good luck with it. Some have not had good luck with it. And, and by that, what I mean is I think this, the plates in this, um, in this titanium electrolytic cell, okay? If it was truly titanium, I don't think those plates would ever fail. There, there's no way they can fail if it's titanium, right? I'm thinking more, it's more of a titanium oxide. And what's happening is after about two years, that, tiny, that titanium oxide, you know, basically gets, to, you know, it, it, it diminishes from those plates, okay? Let's just, let's go ahead and put that out there. Cause this thing only cost, I mean, well, okay, here's the thing. I checked the price on it, it's, you know, like 460 bucks right now, okay? I used to be able to get it for like 200 some dollars. You can't get it for that no more. You know, obviously there's supply chain shortage and all this and that. That one, the one sale by itself, I think is almost 160 or 70 bucks. Just the sale that goes in here, okay? So, no, 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 I'm not buying. I mean, I, that, that, that will supply me chlorine the whole, the whole year, basically, okay? So, I don't know what's beeping at because basically I've already bypassed the whole board. But anyway, um, getting back to the theory. I do think the titanium oxide, because <laughs> I, I, I just can't see if this thing is real titanium, this thing will cost way more than what it was. It probably more like the Haywards and the, the true professional, higher quality saltwater chlorinators. You know, this thing's like a thousand, two thousand dollars, okay? This thing is not all that. I think what happens is it, it changes the resistance of those cells. Now, when I say resistance, okay, you take the thing out of the water, you're, you're not going to have any conductivity. None. Okay. This thing will not work out of water. When you put it in water, that's when you have co conductivity. Okay. It conducts electric, water conducts electricity. And then that's how it determines via resistance 
of how much salt is in your pool, okay? And I think, you know, and that's the reason for the capacitors and the transistors, you know, basically it's doing the math. It's doing very lame, in layman's term, it's doing the math for how much resistance and at what resistance to cut off those relays which stops sending power to your uh, electrolytic cell. Okay. Now, with that being said, if you simply hook up 14, this is approximately 14 volts, 13 to 14 volts. I, I measured it while I go with my meter and it was, it was right at 14 volts. You're, you're going to generate chlorine because you're still sending electrical current through those, uh, through those plates and water is flowing over it. You got salt in the water. It has no choice but to create chlorine based on that chemical reaction with the electricity going through the plates. Now, with that being said, I do not know how effective this will remain once the so-called titanium oxide is completely gone from its plates. Um, I think it will continue to make chlorine. It may not make chlorine to the best of its original state. So at any rate, I went ahead and did what everybody else has done with these things because they found, and they're expensive. I mean, you have to buy, I mean, basically in Texas, pigeonhole people into buying these things every two years. That I think that is literally their, that is their business model. Make them, they know they have a cheap plate and they know they're going to last about one, two, maybe three years if you're lucky. Luck. They know they're going to fail. And you have to buy another one. And from what I understand, I've not contacted Intex. I've not, you know, this thing's out of warranty. It's over two years old. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just doing it my way, which is pretty much what everybody else has done. So, I'm going to monitor this thing and see how, how well it continues to create the the chlorine with the uh, you know obviously the electrolytic reaction that's going on because you're running 14 volts through the thing i mean it has no choice but to create chlorine the catcher is you need to you need to monitor how much salt's in your pool and see this is why this thing's dumbed down for people uh they do it as cheaply as they can to dumb it down so this thing turns off when there's no salt in the pool or not enough salt because basically you're just sending electrical current through these plates and it's not creating any chlorine What's the point in having the thing running, right? So I did check the current through this thing. It's only a half amp DC. You know, I measured it with my meter. So, but anyway, um, if anyone else out there has ran into this issue, I hope you find my video. Um, there's a multitude of videos uh, on YouTube about this exact very same issue, okay? And I just, I wanted to go a little more in depth behind the, the theory and the electronics that basically, it, it's nothing but a, to put it in layman's terms, it's nothing but a sophisticated switch. That's all it is. This whole thing is nothing but a sophisticated switch that will turn itself off or turn itself on based on what you set the timer at or what the resistance of those electrolytic plates are when the board sees the resistance. That's all it does. So, um, anyway, I sound like I'm rambling at this point, but, yep, Intex bit me just like it's bit everyone else, and I'm, I'm doing what everybody else does, and I'm just going to bypass the, that entire board and go straight from the rectifier. And throw 14, you know, 13 or 14 volts straight at it. And I have this thing on a on a timer, which is controlled by uh, it's it's an Internet of Things. It's controlled by Alexa, so I have it on a timer. It'll go off and turn on just like my pump. And I will measure my uh, salt content in my pool with a uh, with a uh, TDC or total dissolved solids digital meter. Anyway, guys, I hope you all found this helpful if you did give me a give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if uh, you like this content if you want to see more stuff in the future and uh, I'm trying to get there guys I'm trying to put stuff out there that's worth <laughs> worth watching I guess 
But anyway, y'all have a good one. Catch you later. Peace out. Hey guys, I also forgot to mention there's uh, there's one additional step I did do uh, with this uh, hot wire job. Um, I also wired up the uh, the fan to the uh, to the 14 volts. So basically, I've got the fan hooked up to straight up to 14 volts DC. I have the um, titanium plates or the uh, electrolytic cell which creates chlorine uh, connected directly to the 14 volts and I have the they call this an ionization cell but it's, it's really it's making chlorine too so I've got both the cells making chlorine I have the uh, the little computer fan running I, I, I really think the only the only thing that could go wrong with this setup right now using what I have here is if the um the rectifier burns up um so this that heat sink does get uh fairly warm but i'm telling you i just turned that fan on and it i mean it, it it did an amazing job cooling this thing down it's amazing it's actually amazing how much it did cool that rectifier down so i think that is a uh, one step that a lot of other YouTubers who have put this issue out there uh, on how they bypass the, the board, I think that's one thing they failed to do because I, I can see that rectifier overheating and then when that goes, you don't have nothing. Um, you can you can bring in another power supply for, you know, AC to DC power supply. And I've seen a video about that as well, but I think this is gonna be, I think this is gonna be a good solution, uh, at least for a while. I think it's gonna get us through maybe this season i hope i really we were going to buy a new pool this season but uh we just decided to keep the old pool keep it going for another year um it served us well we've had this pool for about 15 years but um i think we're gonna hang on to it for another year uh there's no sense in replacing it but we just we had this little hiccup with the, the good old uh good old intex again so but i think this is going to be sustainable for now and she He's cool, man. That, that fan really cooled that thing down. That's amazing. But anyway, I just want to throw it out there uh, before I let you guys go. Um, and I'll catch y'all later. Have a good one.